Hey everyone, Ryan from eBike Escape, and in this video, we're gonna be checking out the brand new Aventon Level 2, so let's get into it. Before we get into the walk around, if you are looking to purchase any model offered by Aventon, we'd really appreciate it if you use the link in the description prior to making your purchase. It's a free and easy way to help support the channel. Thank you so much for your support. It keeps us making review videos like this one. We'll also throw some other resources down in the description as well. Our popular electric bike accessories list, top e-bike brands page, and finally our electric bike discounts code page where we track all the deals on the electric bike brands that we follow. So if you're looking for a good deal, be sure to check out that page as well. With that, let's get into the walk around of the Aventon Level 2 just released. It is currently mid-September 2022. As the name implies, this is the second generation. The first generation was most recently priced at $17.99, and with the Level 2, it has had a price increase to $19.49. We're gonna get into all the specs here in just a second. But if you are looking to protect your purchase, you might want to check out today's sponsor. Don't let a thief or an accident rain on your parade. E-bikes are expensive, so why not protect your electric bike with insurance from Oyster? Unlike homeowners or renters insurance, Oyster covers the full value of your electric bike, whether it is stolen from your home or out on an adventure. Plus you can get coverage for liability and medical payments. The process is simple with only five steps. You might be surprised at just how affordable it is. As an example, our beloved 2021 Radwagon 4 with an MSRP of $2,000, plus our e-bike accessories would cost just $13.25 a month or $159 a year for us to insure here in Wisconsin. So head on over to the link in the description so you can get peace of mind and focus on what's important, having fun on your electric bike. Oh, I'm feeling much better now that I'm covered. Thanks to Oyster for sponsoring this video. So you are looking at the step-through variation. It is also offered in a high step as well as various sizes. So the high step is offered in a regular and large, and the step-through version, the one you see here, is offered in a small medium and a medium large. This is the small medium. It is offered in two colors, polar as you see here, and also Himalayan, which is kind of a pink color, maybe a Himalayan sea salt color, if you will. And the high step is offered in glacier as well as clay. Now with the level two, there are really two significant changes, but there are some other minor details that I will point out during the walk around. But the main one is they moved from a cadence sensor to a torque sensor. It is the only Aventon model that has a torque sensor. So if you're familiar with electric bikes, I would love to hear your thoughts. Are you happy that they made this change? And if you're not familiar, no worries. I'm going to get into the first person riding footage after the walk around, and I'll talk a little bit more about cadence versus torque sensor. And the other significant change is they've moved to the color LCD screen that you see on almost every Aventon model at this point. With that, let's get into all of the specs on this bike. Starting up here with the tires, these are 27 and a half by 2.1 inch wide tires. The brand is Arison, not a brand that I'm familiar with. It also says they are K rubber. The tires have more of a street tread. After all, this is a commuter style electric bike. And I really like that they have the reflective sidewalls, of course, that provides additional visibility while you're out on the road. Moving on to the front hub, usually there's not a lot to talk about here. It's either a quick release or a bolt-on axle but Aventon went with a through axle on this bike. We talked a little bit more about that in our live unboxing. If you wanna see how this bike arrives, you can check out the link in the top right-hand corner of your screen. But compared to quick releases, through axles are a little bit safer, a little bit stiffer, and a little bit more precise. And they also have a name brand hub, something that we have not seen on really any electric bike at this price point. This is a Novatech hub. We did see this hub on a more expensive mid-drive electric bike. And this is a brand that our trusty bike mechanic is actually familiar with. So I think they definitely stepped up the quality up here in the front hub. And like a quick release, the through axle is very easy to remove. If say you wanna put this 
bike in the back of your vehicle. Let's jump to the front suspension. As we see with many electric bike brands, they are opting for zoom components. This is the zoom area, front suspension fork. It does have a lockout with multiple clicks. And there is a preload adjustment on the left side. This seems very similar to the front suspension that is found on their fat tire bike, the Adventure. 65 millimeters of travel on the suspension. I'll push on the front suspension so you can get an idea of what to expect. Certainly going to soak up some bumps along the trails. Moving on to the brakes, they went with Tektro hydraulic disc brakes. Of course, as we get to this $2,000 or so price point, we do expect to see hydraulic disc brakes. And in my opinion, these are an upgrade from the previous generation that had Zoom or Bangle hydraulic disc brakes. They perform extremely well, and I've tested these brakes out on many electric bikes at this point. We have metal fenders that attach to the front fork here, and they do go all the way down in the rear to help prevent you from getting wet while you're out on the road. Many companies are including plastic fenders. A personal preference, the metal ones are a little bit louder, but they give a little bit of a better look and a little higher quality feel in my opinion, though they can be louder if you're riding over perhaps on a gravel trail or something like that. Let's jump into the cable management as well as the head tube here. We can see the Aventon front badge there. Just to note, there is no front basket accessory. There's no four bolt pattern up here. As far as cable management, we have these little tabs here that keep the cables together near the top of the cockpit. And then they have some nice wrap and it goes all the way into the frame. Integrated cables on the left and right side of the frame. Moving on to the cockpit. So we have Aventon locking grips, branded grips. They feel pretty nice. Of course, if you want something with a palm rest, you can of course upgrade. Again, the Tektro hydraulic disc brake levers with motor cutoffs feel really nice and of course perform extremely well. Let's jump to the right side here. A slight step up from what we see on many electric bikes. This is a thumb and trigger shifter. So trigger to go up a gear and thumb to go down a gear, and eight speeds compared to the seven speeds that we see on many electric bikes. Again, this is a component I'm very familiar with, and I do prefer it compared to the very basic Shimano components, the thumb shifters. Jumping back, Aventon uses left-hand thumb throttles, and I feel like these are a little bit easier to press than some of the other thumb throttles that we see on many electric bikes. So throttle at the ready if you ever need it. Next, we have the LCD screen and the controls, again, that we see on almost every model at this point offered by Aventon. I'll go ahead and turn the power on here, the left button. Now, what I do like is on these controls, they have a dedicated light button, so there's no button combination to remember. Let's jump to the front light here. While it is a small light, it's actually very powerful. This is, in my opinion, a above average light, and of course, it's mounted to the handlebars, and when you move them, it's going to point in that direction. And this is the same light that you can find on the Aventon Adventure. We'll get to the other lights here in just a second, but let's talk about the display. Now it does go dimmer when you have the lights on, so I'm gonna turn the lights off here. For the most part, I'm a big fan of this display, though it can be difficult, much like a cell phone, if you're in really bright sunlight, you can get some glare on it. In the top right-hand corner, we have battery, both bars with a percentage, really like that, gives you a little bit more of an idea of how much battery capacity you have left. Miles per hour, front and center, very easy to see. Pedal assist levels, zero all the way up to five. Hitting the I button here will give you additional information. Right now we're on trip distance and odometer. We can go to average speed, max speed, trip time, calories burnt, trip CO2 reduced, trip trees saved, some CO2 reduced, some trees saved, and back to trip distance. Okay, we're going to jump into the app connectivity on this bike. One thing that's unique about these Aventon displays is you can connect them to your phone, which is really cool. Not something you see on a lot of electric bikes, especially in the more affordable category. Holding the I button will get me into the advanced settings of the display. You can see clear trip data, screen brightness. Let's actually turn that all the way up here or make sure it's turned all the way up at five. Set units, system info, and then connect to app. So I'll press I again. It gives me a QR code. Choose my display. And I will scan the QR code here. 
give it a name and pair it. There we go, it looks like it is connected to the app. Again, you have battery capacity. You can turn the lights on and off, total cycling time, odometer, all the information that you should need. You can go into the settings, change screen brightness, auto power off, and speed limit. Let's actually go ahead and turn that all the way up just to make sure that we're getting the full capability of this bike. Of course, always be sure to follow all local laws and regulations. You can also change the assist level and speed units in the settings. You can also record rides, which is really fun. And there is also a social tab, so you can see what other Aventon riders are doing and posting about. And there is some gamification in here as well. You can see there's various medals, uh, information for dealers, support. It's so really cool that Aventon has developed this app. I'm actually really curious to see what they do down the road as they continue to develop kind of their mobile pairing as well as their mobile application. Let's jump to some of the design aesthetics here. Again, this is the polar color. You can see there's some gray accents, a little bit of silver, as well as some silver on the Aventon logo on what I'll call the down tube here. Again, this is the small medium step through frame, very accessible really like that. That's why I always choose to review the step throughs if at all possible. And we do have level branding on the rear stays. Lastly, just aesthetically, one thing Aventon is known for are their smooth welds throughout. If I would compare this weld to pretty much any electric bike that I've reviewed, you just don't see this much detail being taken into the frame. So it gives the Aventon bikes a little bit more of a higher quality feel. And it's something that you can really only appreciate when you see other electric bikes and then you see a Aventon up close. Another thing I'll point out is Aventon actually owns their factory in China, which is something that's unique. So they kind of have the full stack. They own their factory. Their customer support is obviously US based. So that's something that's unique about the brand. And of course they have a dealer network as well. Let's jump to the battery. So put the key in and turn it to the left. Now, usually I would go ahead and remove the battery, but unfortunately, once the battery is unlocked, you use this tab and unfortunately this cracked. I'm not sure if it was too tight, but I will reach out to Aventon for a new one of these. But then the battery, it's a 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery, and it does come out from the bottom of the down tube. And just a note, if you buy any electric bike with a battery at the bottom of the down tube, sometimes it can be helpful if you just turn the wheel a little bit to help get the battery out. Let's jump to the pedals. We have metal pedals with reflectors, pretty standard that we see on many electric bikes. If you want something with some color or some additional grip, you can purchase some other options from Amazon. I really like the pedals offered by Hafni. The kickstand is branded Aventon, and of course it is located out of the way of the pedals. So when you're moving the bike around, no issues with the pedals coming in contact with that kickstand. I'll point out the cables here coming from the bottom of the down tube here, and of course running to the brakes as well as the motor, as well as all of the lights. Speaking of lights, let's jump to the really cool feature on the Aventon level. And it's a feature we've seen on many of the other Aventon bikes at this point, and that is the lights integrated into the seat stays. This bike has them on both sides. Just a note on the Adventure, it just has it on the one side. You also find these lights on the Solterra. When the lights aren't on, they do operate as brake lights, which is nice. And then of course, when you turn the lights on, they're always on, and then they go a little bit brighter when you hit the brakes. A nice safety feature. Now someone on our live stream asked about if you added some panniers to the rear rack on these hangers here, will it block the light? I think it will. You might get a little bit of visibility, but that's why Aventon went ahead and added a, another light in the rear fender here. And again, it does go brighter when you hit the brakes. And when the lights are off, it does operate as a brake light as well. So they've really thought about some of the safety factors on this electric bike, especially given the fact that it is a commuter. Again, if you want to add other rechargeable lights, you can certainly do so, maybe on the C-tube or something like that. Again, rear metal fender here. Here's a quick look at the Tektro hydraulic disc brakes, 180 millimeter rotors, and the rear rack has a payload capacity of 55 pounds or 25 kilograms, 
comes pre-installed, which is really nice. Saves you some time if you're assembling the bike yourself. Let's jump to the saddle. An Aventon branded saddle. It actually looks really sharp. Now, personal preference, whether you find that this is comfortable enough for you. Otherwise, you can check out our electric bike accessories list. We've compiled a list of some of the most popular seats that we see people purchase that add additional comfort. But I do like that this one is a little bit wider. Let's talk about the motor. This is a 500 watt sustained 750 watt peak motor. Stay tuned for our first person riding footage. We'll see just what this motor is capable of and of course take it up our large hill climb test. For gearing, again, eight speeds back here in the rear, 12 to 32 teeth. Really like that, especially the higher gears that should allow us to pedal comfortably into the higher speeds. Again, I'll talk about the gearing in the upcoming riding footage as well. In the front is a 46 tooth double-sided front chain ring that helps protect the cogs and helps keep your pants clean as well. For a derailleur, we also have an upgraded Shimano Acera derailleur. A lot of times on some other electric bikes, we'll see Turney or Altus. So I actually really like that they went with a Acera derailleur, a step up from what we see on many electric bikes. Here's some of the cables. We have a quick disconnect for that rear motor, as well as the derailleur cable, motor cable coming in on the right side of the bike. And we also have the light cables that actually come up through the rear stays here and enter the frame. There's a cutout on each side. Something I would have liked to see is some protection here on the chain stay, maybe a neoprene wrap here, because if you're going over some bumps, this chain of course can come in contact with the cables or the frame. And of course you wanna keep this paint job looking really nice. So that's something you could look on Amazon. I really like the 3M clear tape, but you might wanna opt for a neoprene wrap that can actually go over these cables. With that, let's get into some first person riding footage and we'll talk a lot about the torque sensor and see what this motor is capable of. All right, first person riding footage on the Aventon level two. As I mentioned earlier and showed you in the walk around, I did go ahead and override the speed just to see what this bike is capable of. You should follow all local laws and regulations. We have the speedometer app by Cool Nix here, checking our speed with the display. And just a note, in pedal assist level zero, you do not have any access to the throttle. I do like that as a nice safety feature. All right, with that, let's see what this bike can do, how fast it can get up to speed. Three, two, one, throttle only. Pretty easy takeoff, I'd say. Seven, 11, 13, 15, 17, 18. And looks like it's going to hold us at 20 miles an hour. Again, that's the class two designation. Top speed of 20 miles per hour with a throttle or pedal assist. But then on this bike, they do say it can get up to class three speeds. And again, technically a class three e-bike doesn't have a throttle, but they have the throttle kicking off at 20 miles per hour. A lot of companies seem to be doing that these days. All right, I'm actually going to turn pedal assist off here because I do get the question whether you can ride an electric bike with no assist at all. And this one's nice because you do have that 32 tooth chain ring in the rear. And could probably shift up maybe second, third gear here. And again, Nice leisurely pace. This bike doesn't feel overly heavy by any means, going about 10 miles an hour. Though with the additional weight of any electric bike, hills are going to be a bit more of a challenge. All right, so let's get started with the pedal assist test now. I'm actually going to shift all the way down and start in pedal assist level one. Now, one of the important distinctions of this new level is that it has a torque sensor. So we did a video on that. You can check out if you want a little bit more information, but in essence, a torque sensor senses how much of your own power you're putting into the pedals and then motor power outputs accordingly. So more 
more leg power equals more power from the motor. A lot of people compare this to a more natural riding experience. Perhaps you're, if you're an experienced cyclist coming to an e-bike with a torque sensor, it's just gonna feel a little bit more natural. Maybe you're just a little bit more used to kind of riding a non-electric bike. There's people who love torque sensors. There's people who swear by cadence sensors. So it all depends on personal preference. I ride both uh, pretty regularly. And so it really just comes down to what kind of pedaling experience you want. Now, as far as cadence sensors go, the way I like to explain them is it's kind of an on off. Are the pedals spinning, yes or no? If yes, then the motor's gonna kick on, of course, at whatever pedal assist level you're on. If they're not spinning, then of course the motor isn't kicking on. So you could be pedaling just barely, providing zero effort and you're going to get help from the motor. Or you could be pedaling really hard and you're gonna get the same power from the motor, assuming you're in the same pedal assist level. So hopefully that helps a little bit uh, give you an idea of the difference of them. Now it is going to be a little bit more difficult for me to talk through these speeds because of course it's going to depend on how much power uh, I'm giving the bike, how much human power I'm providing. Let's start off here in pedal assist level one though. And again, first gear, providing just a little bit of effort, I would say, spinning the pedals nice and easily. Going about eight miles an hour. Now, of course, I could pedal a little bit faster. I'm gonna feel the motor kick on, go up to you know 12 miles an hour, but then I'm kind of getting into the, the ghost pedaling where I'm not providing a whole lot of effort. So if I were riding this bike, I would definitely shift up here. We're in second gear now. I think I would shift up even more. Third gear. Maybe even fourth gear. I prefer a little bit of a slower cadence, probably to the, the average rider. Going about 13 miles an hour, 14 miles an hour. And of course, in pedal assist level one, I could even pedal faster and get up to 17, even 18 miles an hour. That's why they say the range of this bike is going to be a lot more, even though it's the same battery capacity as the old version, it's just because you're going to be operating it much more efficiently. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna go in fifth gear here. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level two. I do feel the motor a little bit more there. We'll hang it right here. Going about, again, 12 miles an hour, pretty leisurely cadence. And then of course, if I pedal a little bit harder, maybe you can even hear the motor kicking on a little bit more back there, but going 17, 18 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level three. Again, I'm gonna stay in that fifth gear, at least for now. Feel the motor a little bit there. Again, leisurely cadence, so going about 16 or 17. And then if I push on the pedals, I can really hear the motor kind of ramp up, getting up to 20 miles an hour. All right, let's go into pedal assist level four here. Kind of feel like the motor's ready to go if I pedal a little bit harder. We're going about 14 miles an hour. Again, it's, it just totally depends on how much power you're putting into those pedals. It's really nice if you can kind of try it out for yourself, uh, especially if you haven't ridden any electric bikes. Let's give Pedal Assist 4 a little bit more human power here. And we'll see what we can get that 18. And I would say, I mean, I'm pedaling, pedaling at a cadence where my legs are definitely doing some work. And so that's of course what I prefer. I like getting some exercise when I'm out on whatever electric bike I'm riding. On cadence sensor bikes, usually that means shifting all the way up into the highest gear and then changing the pedal assist levels accordingly. On this bike, you're probably gonna be using more of the gears. The lower gears, of course, are going to come in more handy when you're going up a hill. All right, let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level five. Again, I'm still in fifth gear here. You can maybe shift up. I'm going about 20 miles an hour. All right, I think we should see what this bike is really capable of. All right, putting lots of power gonna shift up in the sixth gear so I can pedal at a slower cadence, provide a little bit more power. There's 23, 24. For sure getting a workout here. 
there's 25. The display is reading just shy of 27. Okay, let's try pedal assist level five again. Shift down a little bit, starting third gear here. And I would need to shift up fourth, fifth. Just want to see how fast I can really get here. Yeah, sixth gear. Sixth or seventh gear is probably where I'd ride this bike. Especially if I wanted to travel at high speeds and get a, some nice exercise. So yeah, I don't think I'm gonna quite hit 28. There's 28. Going to slight downhill though. 27. So what's nice is on a lot of electric bikes, when you get above, you know, 22, 23 miles an hour, you're gonna experience what we like to call ghost pedaling. And that means you're spinning the tires, but the gearing just doesn't allow you to provide any of your own power. And so when, what's nice about this bike is, I mean, I was in seventh gear, so I still have an, another gear to go in the rear down to that 12 tooth chain ring. But I'm still able to really pedal at whatever cadence I want. Another flat area here. And yeah, looks like looks like I'm staying at 27 here. This is a, a flat area. Let's see if we can get even higher than 28. 29. 30 miles an hour. There we go. Providing lots of power. That was definitely a workout. All right, so we know what this bike can do on flat ground, but well, let's see what it can do up our large hill climb test. Okay, hill climb test time. This is the hill that we test out all the electric bikes that we review so you can compare and contrast. We'll put a picture of the hill on the screen because the GoPro makes it look so much smaller than it actually is. We'll also throw the specs of the hill on the screen as well. First test will be throttle only get up to speed here right around 20 miles an hour before the hill starts again 500 watt motor peaks at 750 watts so I'm kind of be curious to see how this motor performs 15 miles an hour 14 13 and I will say the battery percentage is reading uh, 84%. There's 12 miles an hour. I did have about 95, 96 or so percent when I started riding. Though we wanted to try to get this review out as soon as possible, so I took it off the charger before it was completely charged. Looks like 12 miles per hour is going to be the minimum speed which is pretty good for a motor that's advertised as a 500 watt. There's 11 actually, on the GPS at least. All right, so not bad performance on this bike. But if you're buying this bike, you probably want to provide some of your own power given you've opted for a, a torque sensor. So I'm going to go back down the hill and we'll see what this bike can do while pedaling. Okay, hill climb test while pedaling. Just a note, as expected, I mean, I have lots of experience with these Tektro hydraulic disc brakes, but I was able to basically lock up the tires on the way down, getting to, you know, close to 30 miles an hour and coming to a complete stop. So no one should have any issues with these brakes. Right, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of throttle and just shift down here. Now, I would imagine starting in pedal assist level one. Now I would imagine on this hill, I would probably ride in a higher level of pedal assist. But we'll see what you can do in pedal assist level one. All right, hill's really starting. And I think this would be doable if you really wanted to conserve battery pedal assist level one, first gear. Still providing some power, but if you can see my legs moving, still a little bit of a faster cadence, I guess, if you will, even as it gets a little steeper. Let's go into pedal assist level two here. We were going about six or seven miles an hour before. 
feel the motor just a little bit more there, going to eight or nine. Again, still in first gear. That's probably where I would stick in pedal assist level two. Let's go into pedal assist level three. Again, if I push a little harder, I'm obviously going to get uh, more motor power. Pedal assist level three going about 10 miles an hour. Again, pedaling, so I'm getting some exercise, but I'm not overly exerting myself. Pedal assist level four, could maybe shift up to second gear here. Push a little harder on those pedals, 11 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level five, see what we can do here. Maybe even third gear. And yeah, if I really, you know, work a little bit more, I can get up to 13 miles an hour, right around there. So totally capable of handling hills. And I really like that they went with that 12 to 32 tooth cassette in the rear, as opposed to, you know, 14 to 28, uh, which we often see on many electric bikes. All right, with that, let's get to some third person riding footage and I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the Aventon Level 2. Aventon has been on a roll this year. The Solterra, Cinch Step Through, new Pace models, and now the Level 2, all models which we've reviewed on this channel. And the Level 2 is different than those models in a lot of ways. For one, if you're looking for another torque sensor option in the sub $2,000 price point, well, here you go, another option to consider from a well-known brand. Torque sensor e-bikes are rare when you look at the top direct-to-consumer brands, so I'm curious where this goes and I'm happy to see Aventon doing something a little bit different. It's undoubtedly a different experience and yes, the level two is still capable of higher speeds as I experienced, but you're going to have to work for it to get there. It's a rewarding feeling for sure, but don't forget that that left hand thumb throttle is available for speeds up to 20 miles per hour. For me, this is the kind of riding style I prefer as it lends itself to getting more exercise and it fits in well with the overall commuter theme of this bike. And if you're wondering, yes, this small medium frame is a bit too small for me, but I still made it work and it actually fit better than I thought. Though my wife, who is 5'5", five five, fit on this e-bike perfectly. Per usual, I like to showcase step-through e-bikes for their increased accessibility and remember, they aren't, quote, girls' bikes. This step-through frame weighed in on my scale at 60 pounds. At 1949, in my opinion, the Level 2 is fairly priced. Full metal fenders rear rack, three lights in the rear, with a bright one up front, color LCD, and let's not forget the nice looks of those smooth welds throughout, and two different frame sizes in both the high step and step through frame. Bike components wise, you're also getting some nicer Shimano components, and of course, let's not forget the Tektro hydraulic disc brakes that perform extremely well. There's not much I'd imagine buyers will change on this e-bike, maybe a cushier seat and an adjustable stem depending on personal tastes. On the electronic side, the 14 amp hour battery is estimated to get up to 60 miles, which seems plausible on the lowest pedal assist level with the efficiency gains you get with the motor being engaged with that torque sensor. Aventon estimates a throttle only range of 30 miles. Let us know in the comment section below if you'd like to see us do our own range test on this bike. Now you might be looking at the Aventon Pace, wondering what's different compared to the level. Great question. The torque sensor versus cadence sensor for one and the level two has a nice suspension fork, but other notable differences are going to be the battery size and motor, as well as included accessories. Be sure to look closely at the spec sheets on Aventon's website. So do I like the level two and do I recommend it? Absolutely. Is it for everyone? Probably not. If you do plan to purchase one, I'd greatly appreciate it. If you use our link in the description before you make your purchase, it truly helps us in making these videos. And let me know what you think of the new level two in the comment section below. I failed to show it off in this video, but I've been testing out the new Aventon Fantic portable pump. And while pricey at $149, it's a great accessory to have around. So check that out if you're interested, link down in the description as well. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.